have one uh, item that we need to address at the end of the city council, and it's, it'll be very short. So just want to remind the council members uh, at, the, at the end of the uh, regular city council meeting. So at this point, I'd like to open up the uh, Baldwin Park City Council uh, regular meeting today, September the 4th, 2019, along with the finance and the housing uh, uh, the department. So at this point, um, <clears throat> I will go ahead and um, call for the invocation. I believe we have two pastors. Am I correct? We have, uh, oh, Pastor Flores and Pastor Jackson, if you could please step up to uh, the lectern. Appreciate that. So at this point, I will ask uh, all those that are able to stand to please do so. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Thank you. Council, and citizens for attending this meeting. Uh, let us pray. God, we pause on the onset of this meeting to uh, be reminded that in the midst of tragedy and trauma and uh, chaos, God, that you are present and you are comforting and you are leading and guiding us. Lord, we just pray for those uh, who have been affected by uh, just recent tragedies from the East Coast to those on the West Coast and for the families that mourn and grieve loss of life today. Uh, we're mindful, Lord, just how precious life is and how you bring worth and value to that. Uh, we pray, God, that you would just uh, be present, comfort, heal, and allow uh, families, parents, grandparents, Lord, to uh, be able to continue to walk uh, toward you. We thank you for our mayor and our council and all those that serve in public office. Just uh, your wisdom be upon them tonight, Lord, as there's uh, decisions, um, discussions, deliberations, that in all this, Lord, we would honor you, Lord, and serve your people effectively and efficiently. Uh, Lord, I thank you for Pastor Jackson, Lord, and his leadership, too. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you, and I thank you for the City Council to allow us to come together in unity and pray as I was standing. I was just thinking, Lord, that uh, they're the kings and the leaders, and they have the religious rulers that are behind them, praying for them, uh, advising them, Lord. And Baldwin Park had opened up the doors for us, and I just thank you, Lord God, that you hear our prayers and answer our prayers, Father God, that you will have mercy upon our children in our schools, Lord God. You will have mercy upon the parents and bringing the parents and the children together in unity and in one accord with uh, one another. We thank you, Father God, for the city, Lord God. It's the, they have the businesses that are here that are opening that uh, the city shall prosper of uh, Father God. And there are the police department and the fire department, Lord. Your mighty hand upon them, Lord. As they are rolling around the city, Lord God, to uh, protect our city, Lord God, that you will put your hand of protection upon them in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father God, as we go forth, uh, may we go in power and authority and may Baldwin Park prosper in everything they do. In the name of the Lord, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. At this point, we'll face the flag. Uh, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to, first of all, thank uh, Pastor Jackson and Pastor Flores uh, for being here today, leading us in an invocation. One, and I also want to close on behalf of uh, two individuals. Uh, first one, 37-year-old uh, um, um, Giovanni, Giovanni Rey de Pedro, um, a well-established uh, musician, individual who went through uh, St. John's um, School and went on uh, to get his doctorate in, in music as well and traveled uh, the world. Unfortunately, he succumbed uh, to a virus uh, when he was uh, overseas uh, and, and ended up in Indonesia where he passed away. Uh, so there are services for this beautiful family that have uh, contributed to the city of Baldwin Park immensely. So our deepest condolences goes out to the De Pedro, uh, Trina, Remy, uh, the daughter, and all the family members. And I know that there is uh, seven different um, uh, sessions that they will be attending for the church for, for uh, Giovanni. And I believe it's on uh, September the 28th. Uh, at Saint, is it St. Christopher's? Uh, excuse me? At, at 9.30 uh, a.m. Uh, will be the final and, and from there. So 
Um, we just want to make sure that we keep this beautiful family in our prayers. Uh, been in ballpark for many, many years. The second individual also is um, David Casper. Or Mr. David Casper uh, was a teacher in Baldwin Park High School from 1962 to 1995, an electronic uh, uh, teacher, uh, also track uh, cross country as well, and well known. I mean, this person was an icon in the city of Baldwin Park, no doubt. Uh, condolences goes out to his uh, his immediate family. Um, we were um, honored to have uh, both the mom and the son and a daughter attend the uh, actual um, street market last week. So uh, we did a shout out. Uh, the audience did a shout out for for Mr. Casper, and we're looking uh, forward to the services. And and again, he will be well missed. Um, and this person brought a lot of uh, happiness and joy, and uh, also trained me in trying to beat my time on the 5K there <laughs> the, 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 when he was there as well. So uh, our, our deepest condolences goes out to this person who literally knew hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, 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 of individuals and very active also at Mount San Antonio College. Back in 1953, actually, he broke a, a record as a runner himself. He was a track runner and a, and a cross-country runner. So he is with us in spirit, so our condolences goes out to Mr. David Casper and, of course, condolences to the beautiful family and will await the services as well. All right, so at this point, council members wishing to close on anyone's behalf? If not, at this point, I will ask the city clerk, Ms. Gina Ayala, uh, for roll call. Or is it the city treasurer? My name I'll go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. Sorry about that. That's okay. <clears throat> council member Alejandra Avila? Present. Council member Paul Hernandez? Present. Council member Ricardo Pacheco? Present. Mayor Pro Tem, Monica Garcia? Yeah. And Mayor Manuel Lozano? Present. Thank you very much. All right. So uh, at this point, uh, we do have a, um, a proclamation, the 2019 Suicide Prevention Week proclamation. Who is there someone that's going to be, pre are we presenting this to someone? Oh, oh okay. All righty. Um, first of all, come on up. Well, if you could come up to the, the lecture. And let me just say that it's, it's very important for us to, to uh, of course, recognize the, the seriousness of this, of this particular um, proclamation that were, were presented. I think a lot, a lot of, uh, um, so much has happened, and of course, a rapid changing uh, world that we live in today, much different than it was uh, 25 to 30 years ago. And it's important for us to reach out to our youth and, of course, to our adults as well. Uh, suicide uh, affects uh, everyone and it just does not discriminate in the age group. And it's important for us to reach out and to talk to someone. And it's important for us to be able uh, to continue this path and, and to have you here as representatives of, of this proclamation. It's very important. And I'll read it. It says, um, the 2019 National Suicide Prevention Week from September 8th to the 14th, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the United States and the second leading cause of death among individuals between the age of 10 and 34. It is estimated that there are over 1.1 million suicides attempts each year in the United States. One person completes suicide every 12.3 minutes, resulting in over 44,000 suicides each year. Suicide has increased every year for the past decade. In 2017, California experienced 4,324 4, deaths due to suicide, 10,048 hospitalization, and 34,371 emergency department visits for injuries due to, uh, to self-harm. And over 90% of people who die by suicide have a diagnosable and, and treatable a mental health condition, and often that condition is not recognized or treated. Organizations such as the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention envisions a world without suicide and are dedicated to saving lives and bringing hope to those affected by suicides throughout, through research, education, advocacy, and resource. Kaiser Permanente's education, educational outreach program and the NEME on campus high school clubs uh, strive uh, to reduce stigma on mental illness, edu educate and increase awareness and su su suicide prevention. I just want to also let's see you know, that I've worked at an actual place called Las Encinas Hospital, which is in Pasadena. Some of you may or may not be familiar. Of course, it's changed ownership. I used to work there when it was owned by Hospital Corporation of America. And working there for the 15 years, I literally learned, uh, you know, that a lot of people, as stayed here, are stigmatized. You know, they're stereotyped. Oh, the person's not, not well, and so on and so forth. No, those are very serious uh, um, indicators 
for those of you that are affected uh, in, uh, by, by potential suicide, that we need to look and continue to promote and foster this particular field. Because I've seen uh, young individuals that were brought there that were, you know, uh, on the verge of suicide, and some that, that, that follow through. Uh, so it's important for us to make sure. And I'm, I'm certainly happy that Kaiser and that the, the schools are also um, fostering these types of programs because those kids and those students and those adults as well, they, they need to be reached out and, and, and be there for them and comfort them and not stereotype saying the person is crazy. I mean, those are psychological things that need to be dealt with, and it's important. So I, I want to say that I'm extremely happy. And um, hopefully I, I, one of the concerts before the end, maybe have someone speak on the subject uh, to the audience there because it's very important for us to not – you know, to spread this as well. So I want to thank you on behalf of the City of Ballin Park. So who are we presenting this uh, to? Uh, does someone want to say any words? Do we have the person? Or, uh, you want to say some words? Yeah, whoever's organizing. I guess I got designated. Um, <laughs> Mayor Lozano's um, City Council members, um, all um, community members of Ballin Park. My name is Ruth Padilla King. I work for the Kaiser Permanente Educational Outreach Program here in Ballin Park. Behind me, I have um, the privilege and the honor of working with our NAMI club representatives. NAMI is National Alliance of Mental Illness. So these are our club um, participants and actually officers from both Ballin Park High School and Sierra Vista High School. Awesome. And the main goal of our club is to really destigmatize mental illness and really kind of focus on mental health. And so this is one of the first chapters of many things that we want to um, see happen this academic year and really um, provide them the platform for advocacy and work in the, in the community starting at the school. So thank you for this proclamation and um, thank you all for all your hard work. Thank you. Appreciate that. Let, uh, why don't we have the group come up. We'll take a, a picture with everyone and we'll present you with a proclamation. Thank you. Come on up, everyone. Where's Carrillo at? Oh, there he is. Real quick, let me, uh, I want to introduce Angela Salazar, who is the Assistant uh, Superintendent. Did you want to share some words, Mr. Salazar? Sure. Sure. I just want to say how proud I am of our students for taking on this um, mission, because it really is a mission to reach out to their peers and make sure that they are not stigmatized, not afraid, and that they are getting the help they need. Unfortunately, we have experienced tragedies, so it's wonderful that we're being proactive and reaching out to be a real community. One of our values in the Baldwin Park Unified School District is family, and I think our students and our um, employees really do exemplify that. I also want to thank Dr. Susan Coates. She is our district-wide 
school psychologist, um, a position that we created about three or four years ago just for this purpose, to make sure we're not just taking care of the intellectual aspect of students and their physical health, but also their emotional and social well-being. And she's done great things to promote all of that. And then I want to introduce one of our teachers, Nicole Malamed. Um, not only is she a club advisor, but she also advocated to make this a career pathway. So we have career pathways at our high schools for medical, but this is a career pathway now for mental health so that more students will see this as a career option because we don't have enough providers out there to give people therapy and um, psychological services and get medication. It's really difficult for families to access even when they do have insurance. So we're doing a lot in our school district to promote this thank and you. we do thank the city for this honor of our club and we are grateful that you're also bringing awareness to mental health this week and this Absolutely. month. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to let the students introduce yeah. themselves so we don't do anything wrong with their names. Plus, it's great leadership for them, and they all have a position or a role in this um, effort. So if they could also share that. Uh, hi, my name is Cynthia. Um, I come from Service to High School. I've been a part of NAMI for two years. This year, I will be taking one of the leadership roles uh, for my club. And uh, on our campus, we try to spread uh, the message of working proactively and um, taking measures to help students deal with everyday struggles uh, with mental health because we are on the ground floor and we get to see what it's like for each student to struggle. And it's a part of our culture and it's hard to handle, but we're here for each other and we want to make sure that we're making an impact on each other's lives. Thank you. Um, pretty much mainly what she said, but my name is <laughs> I can't really top that, but my name is Alize, and I just joined um, the NAMI club, and I just really want to help our further generations and just... Thank you. Hi, I'm Marissa Martinez. Um, I'm this year's president for Baldwin Parks NAMI. It's my third year being a part of the club. And I'm just really excited to go into this year to continue to make change in our community and help break the stigma um, of allied with mental illness. Um, hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my name is John Garcia. Can I, can I next step? You know, here, go ahead. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, my name is John Garcia. I'm this year's um, vice president for Psychology Club in NAMI. I know I'm kind of like a stranger, but like I'm hoping you guys see me as family because I'm just trying to, you know, do the best for our community. That's all. Um, hello, my name is Anthony Martinez, and I'm the PR for Baldwin Park High School's Nami Club. And I'm really looking forward this year to try to spread word about mental illness and just try to make everyone feel as safe as they can with their own a mental state. Hi, my name is Paulina Frausto, and I'm a part of Baldwin Park High School's NAMI Club. It's my second year in the club. This year, I'm one of the PR officers. And, you know, basically what everyone said, I hope that we can continue to help the community in breaking the stigma around mental illness. Thank you. Doctor? <laughs> I'm Dr. Susan Coates. I'm, uh, I work at the district office and I've been a part of the community for um, a couple of decades now. <laughs> Longer than my hair shows here. Um, you need to be really proud of this generation. They have a heart to break through and break through walls that when people aren't suffering, they're helping their peers, they're, they want to help their families, and they want to step into the future and be able to help their community. So you should be very, very proud of them. Thank you. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
guys uh, have a dinner or something? Uh, we're having a barbecue Sunday, but we did have a little dinner. Oh, yeah, it's cool. Nice. All day yesterday. Seven o'clock. <laughs> I would have been hampered. You probably would have gone. Thanks. Wow. <laughs> All right, good evening. At this point, I will now open up the public communication. Anyone wishing to speak, you have approximately three minutes. Christina, how are you? Good evening. Karen, how are you doing? Fine, thank you. Good evening, everybody, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, staff, and residents of Baldwin Park. I'm Christina Larios, uh, the Regional Youth Services Coordinator for LA County Library. I am very excited to introduce your new library manager, oh. Ms. Catherine Lozier. Thank you. Uh, she comes to, to you from Bub uh, Glendale Public Library. Oh, wow. And she's going to be wonderful. So I'll let her share some information about herself. I am so sorry, I'll get the greetings next time to council. But um, I do come from Glendale. This is my first day in Baldwin Park, and I'm very excited. Um, I have over 13 years of public library experience, over eight years as a manager, two years as a senior manager in libraries, and I'm just hoping to be able to get to work with a lot of you and see you in the library. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for being here. So we, I don't know if you're able to make it well, tomorrow, if not next, our last concert, introduce you to the community. Be nice. Christine, we get together with that. Give me a call. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I have big shoes to fill. So <laughs> I have my work Pleasure. Out for me. Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Good evening. Forever. Hello, City Council, Baldwin Park residents. Mm -hmm. uh, on your agenda, Sam, number one. Uh, I called you last week, no return call, or nobody went and checked what I requested you to, or asked you to have taken care of. So it doesn't really, then, the reason I bring that up, number five, I don't know why you're changing the name, I guess it sounds better, but you don't, you don't enforce nothing. I can go down to any street in Baldwin Park. Maybe the street you live on because you don't let nobody park on it. And I can find probably 10, 20, 30, maybe 100 violations, code enforcers. People park all over the place. You don't care. I've never seen any of you drive down my street. You know why? Because you, you don't care. You people that have been here the longest, mayor, Garcia, Pacheco, you guys never go anywhere unless it concerns where you, it benefits you. So what the heck are you doing? We pay you people. Okay, I know, we don't pay you enough. We pay you people, and you still don't do nothing. The code enforcers should enforce codes. You people were given this piece of paper, and I might as well throw it in the trash because I don't think any of you will take care of any of this. People leave garbage all over the place. Have any of your employees, I should say our employees, pick up anything? No. If the city does human resources or uh, the parks and recreation or anybody else, Mayor, you don't even know where half of the stuff in this city is because you know why you don't care. The best part is you got code enforcers, use them. Otherwise, get rid of the whole thing. And only having one meeting per month, that's ridiculous. What do you guys do the rest of the time? Party? I know it doesn't do any good to complain because you people, the park, so-claimed nature park, 15 inches of cement. What are you guys building? A barricade? Or, I know, you're waiting for war. You're waiting for North Korea to shoot a bomb over here. If they dropped the bomb, we'd all be dead. You wouldn't need any 15 inches of cement. The park is a nature park. It's not a cement park. And you people that never go there, the only time you go there is when you have a dinner or somebody's giving you something. I live across the street. Oh, wait a minute. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much. You went along with public communication.
Good evening. Hi, good Hi. evening. Uh, good evening, Honorable good. Mayor, Council, City staff, and members of Baldwin Park. My name is Danica Mendoza, and I'm with the office of Senator Susan Rubio. Mm. I'm here before you all to invite you to our upcoming event, which is a citizenship clinic. You might have these flyers in front of you. Uh, this is just, uh, we'd just like to invite the residents of Baldwin Park to this upcoming citizenship uh, clinic taking place on Saturday, September 14th in the city of Rosemead. We are asking if any interested participants can please call ahead just so we can schedule these appointments. Um, this is a great opportunity for residents to complete their citizenship application and get legal advice from lawyers who will be on site to answer any questions they have regarding their uh, case. So thank you so much and uh, have a good day. Thank, thank you. you. Please thank the senator as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving on with public communication. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Lozano. Yes. Council members. We're here again, another council meeting, um, pro-life members. And we're here hoping that you have some answers for us. Um, the questions we had the last couple of meetings in reference to what are our alternatives to what will happen at the facility where Planned Parenthood has purchased the building. And then we found out that they also purchased the building next door to that one in the corner of Sterling Way and Main. So we really would like to find out what has been done or if any conversation has happened amongst you. I know this is probably something that may not be as serious to you as it is to us as a community, but we really, really would like your help any way possible, at least some form of communication to find out, you know, what is an alternative. We understand that by right they have the ability to do, you know, what they do best, abortions. Um, however, you know, we'd like to come together and say, you know, let's work together and provide an alternative. You know, I'm for women's rights, believe me. Um, however, I'm not for abortion. You know, I really appreciate the women that fought for us, you know, for our rights to vote, women's rights for better pay. I mean, I'm all for women's rights. However, it's very difficult to swallow, you know, killing a fetus, a baby, another life in the womb. And I get it. I understand a lot of women say, it's my body. I can do whatever I want with it. But where are those limitations? You know, here, you know, we, there's conversation about moral compass. What is right? What is wrong? You know, we learn through our parents, you know, what is right? What's wrong? Don't lie. Don't steal things like that. So, you know, really think about what is right when it comes to Planned Parenthood. You know, I get the fact that they provide women's services, and I'm all for that, but they're not the only ones that provide women's services to test for STDs, to test for pregnancy, to provide all those free services that are for the low income or the people that can't even afford any of these services. I understand. But there's other places that these people can go. And if there's not one nearby, let's create one. Let's build something. And especially, you know, you have this specific plan that proposes to build future housing just fronting this facility that Planned Parenthood plans to provide services. Thank you. Thank you. What, what, was, what was your name? My name is Teresa. Teresa. Thank you, Teresa. I do have additional signatures. I know my time is so, up. No, that's fine. You could hand it over to our city treasurer, Maria Contreras. Thank, thank you, Teresa. Thank you. So that's about 10,000 signatures now. All right. Thank you. All right. Moving along with public communication. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Hello. My name is Dora. And um, hello, Mayor and Council members. Thank you. And I was here before, and I spoke against Planned Parenthood, as every our ladies here are against. Um, I just want to... Um, Right now that the, the students that were here for the suicide, oh. this is what I feel Planned Parenthood is creating. It is creating a culture of death. You know, and I, I really think that you need to contemplate on that. You know, these students are suffering. And 
you know, by having this clinic here, what are, what are we telling them? That it's okay to kill an, an unborn child? That it's not a child because it's a fetus? It's not a baby? We, we have to back up these children. You know, we can't say, oh, you know, we don't want suicide, but yet we're killing these unborn babies. I hope you're hearing, Mr. Hernandez, because I, I see you looking down at something. I, I was taught that oh, you, look, okay. you look at a person. Let's continue. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. Appreciate and, it. Um, so, yes, I mean, you know, we, you just got 1,500 constituents from Baldwin Park. You know, we are your constituents. We do not want Planned Parenthood here. I noticed that they were at the, your fair, your street fair, well, our street fair. But um, I just want to stress that you really need to, to, to really think about Planned Parenthood. Um, there's other things that you said that takes money, and I guess we need to use the money to buy them off. and. Use it for housing. I know that Ms. Avila had mentioned that last at the last meeting. So please support us, your constituents. You do and we'll support you. That's it. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right, good evening. All right, good evening, good evening. Mayor Lozano and city council members. Uh, my name is Frank Ebner, and I'm here also to speak on behalf of affirming the quality of human life, um, the infinite value of human life. It's, there's, I'm not sure exactly where to begin I, because I had a couple things to say, but um, I guess I could start with um, the disconnect we have. Uh, Giovanni De Pedro, what a wonderful musician he was. I mean, I went to some of his recitals, fantastic. And he, was, he went all around the world you know, with his musician ability. He gave of himself. He was selfless in that respect. Uh, coach Casper, fantastic coach, great teacher. Um, I remember the last time I spoke to him, he had just come back from Europe. He was a, tra a track and field fanatic, you know, years and years after he'd retired from Baldwin Park Unified. Now, all the students that are here for suicide prevention, again, life affirming. Okay, let's help the people that need help, okay, when they're struggling with that, that, that challenge, you know, that they have. Uh, Baldwin Park Unified, they say their value is family. Can't have a family if... Planned Parenthood is going to be destroying the family. I mean, that's just a simple fact. I'm here to speak the truth. And the truth is that we can all agree on certain qualities. One of them is respect. Is there anybody here that disagrees that we should have respect for each other? Planned Parenthood is built on lack of respect. They don't respect parents. They don't respect the parents of children who are pregnant. They don't respect the parents of children who are in the classroom. I'm a teacher. Students come up to me every day and they say, hey, Ms. Reppner, how are you doing? I say, hey, every day is a gift. Every day is a gift. Imagine all the, the children, the human beings that have been aborted by Planned Parenthood. One of them could have been Giovanni De Pedro, Coach Casper, any one of us. I mean, here's, here's a book that was brought up last, last time, last month. It's perfectly normal. Go on Planned Parenthood's website. It comes out at fourth grade. Planned Parenthood has curriculum for fourth graders. And you don't have to go very far before you see, you know, people that have nothing on. And they say it's perfectly normal masturbation, perfectly normal. And then the Me Too movement comes up and says, hey, these men who are masturbating in front of me, they're not respecting me. Well, Planned Parenthood is getting a clientele based on lack of respect. Is that what we want in Baldwin Park? Is, it, well, is that what we want for our fourth graders? Is that what we want for our families? No. What do we want? Do we want to value family? Do we want to value respect? Do we want to value human life? We don't know what human life is being put out because we haven't given it a chance. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. Moving along with public communication. Thank you. Thank you. We'll give it over to the city treasurer. Okay, at this point, moving along with public communication.
Good evening, Margarita. Good evening. Um, the other day I stopped across the street from here from the uh, Baldwin Park mm -hmm. to let a man cross, but then I had to tell him to stop because the other car was not. I saw him that he was not going to stop. And I remember that a year ago or more than that, it was approved to put some kind of mm -hmm. uh, cross light or something, and it hasn't been done. So I just want you to um, remind you to go back and look what happened to that, to that uh, uh, thing that was approved before somebody gets killed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving along with public communication. Good evening, City Council. My name is Jorge Pena. I'm an attorney I with Christ the King Law Center. I spoke last month in this meeting regarding Planned Parenthood. I'm here to, to oppose the, the attempt by Planned Parenthood to build a clinic in the city. Uh, I, it seemed encouraging what I heard after the comments I made, after the comments that were made by the public after the last meeting regarding that, that I was here at. Apparently, it seems like there are plans to, well, at least discussions regarding um, getting that property that they wanted perhaps sold or used for other purposes. That seemed encouraging. I don't know what's going on after that. Um, just, just wanted to reaffirm again my opposition to Planned Parenthood here. Um, I, I, I heard the statement last time about something awful supposedly President Trump said. I don't re want to bring him, a discussion of him here since, I mean, that's a national issue. We're here at the local level. But um, I, I want to emphasize that this issue shouldn't be a partisan issue. It, it should be something that everybody agrees on, uh, Democrat, Republican. I know there was a time in this country about maybe 40, 50 years ago where this issue was not a Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative issue. This is something that everybody pretty much agreed on, the, the right to life, uh, the, the protection of the unborn. Uh, but then all of a sudden that decision came down, the, the abomination that probably exceeds in, in, in horror the Dred Scott decision that, that said that slavery supposedly was legal in this country, the, the decision we know is Roe versus Wade. And then all of a sudden it became a partisan issue. Uh, but that issue, like I said, it shouldn't be partisan. The, 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 our Constitution, our Declaration of Independence says that we're endowed by our Creator with the right to life, life at first, and then liberty, and, and the pursuit of happiness. And our Constitution even says, you know, the, the 14th Amendment, no state shall deprive any person of the right to life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any state deprive any, nor, nor shall any person be, person be deprived of the equal protection of the laws. Well, what about the unborn? It doesn't seem like they have the equal protection of the laws in this country. So, once again, this shouldn't be a partisan issue. We should all agree. Planned Parenthood should be here. It shouldn't be anywhere in this country. That's it. Have Thank you very much. Have Appreciate that, sir. Thank you. All right, good evening. Give me a translator, please. Sure. Mrs. Avila. See, do you want, did you want, do you want to translate from here? It's better over here. Okay. Thank you. Buenas noches. Una de las cosas que quiero traer de primero antes de cualquier otra cosa es el olor que está sacando la de esta de Ruthley. Que no tienen permisos en, en la puente. La puente y Little Ramona. Ok. Ok, donde está el Hamburger Stand. Día, otra vez fui a almorzar ahí con un amigo de West Covina. Me dice, Uy, aquí se pone bien loco uno. Good evening. One of the first things I want to discuss is the smell that's coming out of Brooklyn on Puente and Ramona. Um, he s talked to some people and, and they said that you can get high off of the smell. 
Esa es la primera cosa. La otra cosa es que les di unos retratos de lo que está pasando aquí en la ciudad, comenzando con el parque. I also want to discuss the pictures that I gave you of things that are happening here in the city. En Walnut Creek, lo tía lo metimos allí, agarramos retratos. Los retratos que están allí no es la mitad de lo que es. Es un cochinero. Cualquier contrato que tienen allí con el contratista o el, el, el presidente de allí o lo que sea. We went into Walnut Creek and took some pictures. Those are not all the pictures, but we took some pictures, and it's a mess in there. Whatever the contractor is doing is a mess. <coughs> los dos millones que dio la blanca que los dio para nosotros, no hemos mandado los retazos esos pa blanca para que mire exactamente. Yo sé que estuvo aquí el fin de semana. No tuve eh, la oportunidad de platicar con ella. The two million that Ms. Blanca Rubio gave us for that park, I haven't had the chance to show her the pictures. I know she was here this weekend, but I haven't showed her the pictures of the mess. Otra cosa es que sobre la ciudad, pegando allí a Kaiser, el cochinero que tienen allí, le dije al señor Gutiérrez hace dos meses, estaba un couch allí, y un cochinero, y luego pegado al parking lot de Kaiser, a la mano derecha yendo para Bone Park Boulevard. Also, I had uh, called Mr. Gutierrez of the mess that's over there by Kaiser. There are couches and just a mess all around the Kaiser area. Cada día pasan como unas, yo digo unas, 500, oh, no, no, como 5,000 personas que pasan por allí. En los carros. Muchos son mis amigos. We probably have about 5,000 people going through, day, through there daily, and some of them are my friends. Y me dicen, ¿qué cochinero tienen aquí en la ciudad? ¿Que no tienen trabajadores para que levanten esas cosas? They say to me, what kind of mess do you have here in the city? Don't you have workers that handle that? Son cosas que... Cualquier persona que trabaja por la ciudad mira, para y lo levanta. Pero la primera cosa que hacen es que agarran retratos. ¿Para qué agarran retratos? Agarren y suben las cosas y limpian la ciudad de Bowen Park. Those are things that city workers just go by. They should go by and just pick them up, but instead they go by and just take pictures. Why are you taking pictures when you can just pick them up? Una de las cosas que que he mirado yo, andan nomás gastando gas los trabajadores. No andan haciendo su trabajo, nomás andan para arriba y para abajo. También cuando hacen las yardas en los parques, después que dejan allí, queda un, un cochinero también. I've noticed that the workers just drive around the city just wasting gas and not doing anything. Also, when they do the grass at the parks area, they leave a mess. También aquí en el Morgan Park, donde se paran los bases, allí es un cochinero. Cada mañana debían agarrar y limpiar donde paran los bases. Pasa otra persona que no es de la ciudad y dice, ¿y este cochinero qué es? Also, at the bus stop, especially here in front of Morgan Park, there's a mess. Every morning that trash should be picked up. People going by there, they see the mess. Necesitamos que agarren unas personas que sepan qué, qué es lo que están haciendo. Que no se la pasen en la oficina y no hacia allí. No, hacen, no tienen el valor que las comunidades de Bomb Park son de otras ciudades donde viven ellos. No les importa. Esa es una de las cosas que tenemos que hacer. We need to get people that care and value the city the way we value the city. They don't live in our city, so they don't value it. Otra cosa, la Fraser yendo para la high school y la Tracy y todo, deían ir en la mañana. Agarramos retratos también de eso. Se lo vamos a mandar a usted mayor para que miren quién fue el que de la idea esa. Y dónde está el estudio que tenga que ver hecho. 
I'm also going to send you pictures of Fraser going towards Sierra Vista to, so you could see Mayor. I don't know who had the idea of that. Cuando duraba unos cinco minutos para llegar a la Sierra Vista High School, duras media hora, porque no pasan los, los carros ya. We used to take five minutes to get to Sierra Vista. Now it takes half an hour because the cars don't move fast enough. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, move along with public communication. Anyone else? Oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Good evening. Good evening, sir. What binds us together, all of us, each of us, is that we are leaders, leaders of our community. As a teacher, I was made aware of that. One of the things that we want to do is raise awareness. Awareness of what is happening in our community, what affects us day to day, moment to moment. <coughs> Los Angeles, a sanctuary city, recently attacked even by our own government. We're offering sanctuary what is sanctuary? Do we understand the meaning? Is it something just holy? What does it mean to each of us? It means protection. It means an awareness that some things in life need hope. We come to those decisions by being aware that we are all called to be leaders, to understand there are bigger things in life than personal gain. We must protect our children, the youth. We must be aware of the decisions that we make day to day, whether they're small or large. We may not be a sanctuary to many people, but we pray and hope that those who wish to destroy life and they're well named, we know who they are. But the main purpose is abortion. We can put names on things and make them good to hear. Plan Parenthood. Recreational marijuana. Medical marijuana. We can put names on things and know that what's really behind that is they're hiding things. But we as a community must be aware that we have a greater responsibility, a moral responsibility. I thank you for, my, for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak under public communication? If not, I will now declare the public communication close. Uh, council members, what to say? I just want to, um, first of all, I want to thank the uh, new librarian uh, for, for being here. Uh, introduction, by Christina, thank you very much. So we look forward to working with you and, I'll, of course, visiting uh, the various events uh, that you have there as well. And keep up that, 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 that um, enthusiasm that this library has presented to the residents of the city of Baldwin Park and, and beyond. So I would like to thank you. I also uh, want to address the, the Plant Parenthood, of course, uh, uh, we've been in contact with the Planned Parenthood. Of course, they're not willing to budge on any type of a negotiation uh, directly with the city at this point. So I just want to make that very clear uh, so that everyone is well aware. And as, as said from, from the beginning, you know, the fact that it doesn't fit in Ballin Park for one, let alone insulting a church right across the street from it. So obviously that kind of leads us to believe that that's not a concern, uh, and it should have been uh, from, from the beginning. So I want to make that very clear. 
even though we still continue to see what possibilities there are uh, for, for the city and whether there are potential um, avenues, uh, uh, even though it's limited because, as we mentioned from the beginning, uh, there are constitutional rights that every business uh, throughout, the, throughout, throughout the country has a right to locate uh, or purchase a property and, and move forward from that point. But the unfortunate part is that it happens to be in the wrong place in the wrong city. So I just want to be able to let everyone know that statement. And Teresa, you, I just want to say that you touched on a very, uh, um, and I asked your name, uh, this um, past weekend, uh, Sunday, I was uh, doing my running at the Santa Fe Dam, where I normally do early in the morning, and I was stopped by a, a female who indicated to me she, um, I guess she's not a resident, she said she wasn't a resident, or she may or may not, and, and told me straight out, this is the second time straight out, that I don't have a right to tell her as a female and me as a male how to govern her body. And, and I'm glad you covered that because as we know, Teresa, there's, there's, and you mentioned, you mentioned some of the positive things that the organization uh, provides us while in between that. And you're the first person that actually has made that and you made an impact on me and I want to let you know and that's why I asked you for your name. Um, wasn't a very friendly um, um, conversation with the person uh, after that, but she made it very clear, went to a major lecture over me. And of course, I, I stood there and, and heard her out and, 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 and ran off after that, decided to just keep on running, and she yelled something that was not very nice towards me. But nevertheless, that's a reality, because we have to understand that there's two sides. And, I, and, and, and as the mayor of Baldwin Park, you, 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 you walk a very fine line, a fine, fine line in, between, in between what you support and what you don't support and what you potentially could, could support. Uh, and, and, I'll, and I'll say to this date, it's in the wrong place and the wrong, and the, and, and the wrong city, uh, despite that maybe someone else may tell me something as I'm walking, but that just want to let everyone know uh, that, that in, in, in particular. Uh, at this point, uh, council members have anything? Oh, yes, uh, council member. Uh, I just want to yes. share, um, I, had, uh, I had the opportunity to do a homeless outreach on August the no. 25th. That, that, yes. Um, that I invite all council members and sure. mayor to um, contact the chief, and I would recommend that you do the homeless outreach. I did it with Lieutenant Finley, also with Officer Israel Rodas, Corporal Noel Cervantes, and Officer Rick Olgas, along with Monrovia Police and Almani Police. And let me tell you, um, it's heartbreaking to be out there, to see how many homeless are out there, some of them by choice, some of them are not by choice. We heard of a lady that was a nurse, lived in Huntington Beach. Five years back, she got hurt. She's homeless since. So there's a lot of families out there that are homeless. We walk the wash, talk to different people. We handed out information. Um, the officers were great at talking to the people. Uh, they, they really opened up to them. However, you know, I feel it's... Uh, it's a band-aid approach. It's a great approach, but I think we need to do more. Uh, we heard the reason why they were homeless because the rent was too high and they couldn't afford it, so they got evicted. We heard of a gentleman, a, a, a couple, I talked to them. They lived under the bridge in the wash. He parked his car in a business because he had nowhere else to park it because that's where he lives, in the wash. Next morning, he gets up to go to work. The car is gone. So my point to this being is that the homeless outreach that we're doing is great. The officers are doing an excellent job, but they can only do so much with that. We can give them the information, and, and they told us they're waiting on, on housing. A lot of people were waiting to hear from housing. Mm -hmm. There's not enough housing, but there's a lot of homeless. So I, I do invite you to go out, the, out there. Um, It'll make you feel completely different about this problem, and that's why I'm asking uh, my colleagues to please look into the transitional housing for all these. California has failed a lot of people, and I feel as a city we need to do something. We can't save the world. I understand that, but we can do something more, and I, I think uh, we can start with transitional housing because the people that I came across... They want to change. They want to do better, but they can't do it on their own. They can't do it from the street. Like I said, the gentleman's car got stolen, so now he take, has to, besides from living under the bridge, 
Now he has to take a bus to get to work. And they're trying, but they, they can only do so much. So I feel we really need to work on the low to moderate income housing here in our city. We need to work on that transitional housing. Like the gentleman said, we need to value human life. And we need to value it more. So I, I ask you that you take those rights with our police officers and see the impact that they're making. This homely, the homeless people are actually walking up to them when they see them because they know what they're doing, the outreach that they're doing. But I don't feel it's enough. They can only do as much with the money that we have. But I feel as a city, we can do more. Absolutely. So if we can really look into that, please, I'd really appreciate it. And I invite you guys to go out on that outreach and get to talk to some of these people, go under the wash, go under the bridge, and see the conditions that they're living in. It broke my heart. And we had just been discussing it can happen to any one of us at any given moment. I can become disabled and suddenly lose my job and not have a place to live. It could happen to you, Mayor. It can happen to any one of our audiences. And it breaks my heart. It makes me want to cry right now. So I feel we're not doing enough as a city, and we really need to step on it and, and move forward with that affordable housing, low to moderate income housing. I know, again, we can't save the world, but we need to do something, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief, for putting that together for me. Yeah, and let me, let me just, uh, so the general audience knows, the uh, state of California uh, last year voted on uh, Proposition HH, which uh, literally, I don't know how much uh, statewide, but we, the supervisor, the supervisors have allocated, uh, is, it, is it about two million, three million? Manny, help me out on the number uh, for the studies in this area. Uh, it was several million dollars for the study of the San Gabriel Valley, but it's all, it's throughout the Los Angeles County. Right, and then part of it, just to let the general audience, there's a joint venture between the city, South El Monte, El Monte and the city of Baldwin Park to yes. actually build an, an, actual, an actual facility to be able to house and do the actual transitioning of, 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 of homeless individuals. So uh, is the city active at this point? Absolutely, unequivocally. Because again, if you look uh, at, these, at, these, um, at these particular um, uh, initiatives that have taken place, and as a matter of fact, for the honest, actually place it in the, in the, in the now so that individuals know when, when is the next meeting? The very important key meetings, and, and, and there's been inroads, but could you talk about a little bit about it for me, Manny? Yes, yeah, there was actually a meeting this morning and staff attended in the city of West Covina. But the actual study that you re referred to, Mayor, is a study to find um, a facility within the Tri-City area, which is South Al Monte, Al, Al Monte, and the city of Baldwin Park. So it's not actually to build a facility, it's to identify pr a property uh, so the county could Correct. come in at a, at a later date and uh, build a facility that would house some of the less fortunate in our community. So what are we looking at as far as like, what are they looking square footage? Are they houses or what are we? It's, where? it depends on uh, if what facility that they they find it could be a, a facility in the city of Ball and Park or maybe South Al Monte or Al, Al Monte it could be a 20 bed a 30 bed a hundred bed it just kind of depends on the facility that they identify and the facility that the county would want to operate it, it wouldn't be a city facility right, it, right. it would be within our city uh, per, parameters or South Al Monte or Al Monte part of the tri city now out of here is there a time is there a timetable as far as when when they anticipate an, an allocating or excuse me an, an actually uh, pinpointing a particular area from within the tri city areas? Yes, right now they're they're working on the infrastructure, so they're con conducting studies, and I would guesstimate probably within the next two years they will probably identify a funding. It's probably not as quick as we would we would like it, yeah, but right. uh, it is uh, something in the works the problem didn't happen overnight so it were probably to to get out of this situation is going to take a few years uh to make some improvements uh within our community all right okay all right thank you i just want to add that i know uh, alejandra's uh, um, uh, call for it something immediately i mean right. i know that that we do fund through the community uh, black grant uh, what is it the amount that we allocate for for homeless uh, uh, assistance Who, are we aware well for cdbg i think we fund well over a hundred thousand dollars in the, the food pantry right. uh motel vouchers and things of that nature uh it uh it uh, definitely helps out the community but there's always more that we could we could do 
Yeah, and let's also place that on the newsletter as well so that people are aware of the actual funding itself. And, of course, you know, I've, I've, I've actually referred to several of the homeless and also housed in some of the hotels here. Um, so that's primarily just, a, just an overnight type of thing. So it's not, it's not a long-term solution, of course. But uh, just wanted to mention that for the general public purposes. Uh, but, yes, Council Member. I just, um, Ben, if you can correct me if, if you need to. I know there's um, other programs out there. I know this particular program, we have to wait for the funding, and it is a two-year program. You're, you're right. But there's also, like, Mar I keep mentioning Mars Place because there's other programs like that, that they come. They even offer to come and look for land here in our city, correct? They can find the land. They will purchase the land. Or there's different ways to go about it and where they can build the transitional housing, which means transition. It's a place where right. they come, they live, they provide the services, whatever services they need. They have wraparound services. They get them ready, get them, make sure they have a job, and then eventually they move out to their own place, and then we house more people. So I don't remember how many. Um, it's not a lot of homes at a time, but I feel if we can help one, one out of ten families, that's a start. So that type of building is what I'm looking at for right now, and that would be a lot quicker than waiting for the two-year for that whole process to go through. Companies are ready to come in, they're nonprofit, to buy the land themselves. And then, again, Ben knows a lot more about it, but I know those options are available. I've seen them. I've walked in them. People take pride in living in those places, and they're eventually ready to move out because now they have a job, a steady place to live, and now they can go out and rent a place for themselves. And again, we need to work on, on affordable housing here, a rent control freeze, a rent, uh, a rent uh, freeze so that our tenants are not getting kicked out. That's what's displacing a lot of these people. And if we look into all of that and work with it together, I think we can make a big difference here in our city. Again, we can't save everybody, but we can make a difference, at least to some families. So I think it's very important that we look into that, Ben. Mayor. Right, oh, yes, Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. I just want to mention that uh, Eurico Esparza. Yes. She's been really, um, she's been working very closely with, on this issue, with the regional entities. And I had an opportunity to join a call. Uh, it, it was for the San Gabriel, San Gabriel Valley COG, and they're trying to create this regional housing trust fund. And uh, in, on that call, I, I really saw how Eureka was, you know, a leader in, in that call and, um, you know, really following closely and working closely with the surrounding cities so that we can be at the forefront of a lot of this, you know, the homeless funds um, and, and also the plan, the kind of the regional plan. I know that we are working with the Tri-Cities, El Monte, South El Monte, Baldwin Park, and in some cases we've received funding, and so we will be the lead administrator. Um, and then in some cases, you know, South El Monte or El Monte. So I really want to give a lot of kudos to um, Eureka and the work that she's doing under uh, the supervision of Manny Garillo and our uh, Department of Recreation and Community Services. And... There is a lot that's happening. It's just it's not happening at the pace that we would like to see it, right? And so I definitely understand your compassion and your um, sentiment towards the homeless. And I do, I do want to recognize that Eureka and Recreation Community Services have really been following this and collaborating in, in ways that we haven't done before. And so um, I'm, I'm really glad to see that. And that's, that's new not only internally with our police department and some of the other departments, but also with some of the surrounding cities and then also with entities like the COG. So I feel like we really are getting ahead. Um, and I know this because I've observed. But in addition to that, I also want to say that we really have moved to create affordable housing opportunities. And I don't want to lose sight of that either. You know, we've, we, we do have several affordable housing projects in our city that serve the seniors, and we're seeing a lot of seniors being displaced for the reasons that you mentioned. You know, um, the, co the cost of housing is increasing. We're seeing that in our city. And so I'm so glad that we do have these affordable housing um, apartment units, um, such as GNK, Teleku, and those are years, you know, even before I came in, but I'm just glad that 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 trajectory was set long ago 
And even more recently with Rome, we're moving forward with yet another Rome project. Um, and again, it's in the name of bringing affordable housing to seniors, to families. And um, so that coupled with the homeless policies, I think that we're developing here in the city and regionally. Um, and then, you know, other initiatives that we're looking at. I think that we, we're all saying, we're speaking the same language. And I just, you know, want to reassure that we are working in the same direction. And I know, I know we're working towards affordable housing, but again, I feel we need more low to moderate income housing because affordable housing could be affordable to somebody that makes over 60, affordable to somebody that makes over 100. It depends what you look at when you're talking affordable. So we need to look at low to moderate incomes, not just so much affordable. That's what I'm thinking. And that's what we've been pushing. We do have low, we have low, we actually have very low, low and moderate income um, affordable housing here in the city. And so, you know, I'm sure that this, our city staff can take an inventory of that and provide that information to us. But we do, we just need more. Moderate income is actually not as common as, let's say, low income um, because of, you know, it's always just been kind of one of those areas. But we also need moderate income because there are families, we, we hear from families that are being pushed out east because, you know, maybe they grew up here, but they can't, they, they can no longer afford the cost of, of housing. So I agree with you, and I just want to assure that I think we're all saying the same thing. We're all speaking the same language. Um, there is a need for very low. There is a need for low income as well as moderate income. And moderate income, you know, that's going to serve more of those families, those working families um, that we also want to keep here. And we get approached all the time, how can my, you know, children uh, become homeowners here? Well, we're trying to create those opportunities. So, um, again, I... And at the same time, the homeless, that's, that's a whole other population. So I do want to assure that I think we're all on the same page when it comes to this. And, you know, we need to get Eureka to come and give us another yes. update uh, because there's a lot of work that's happening, I think, uh, you know, weekly, uh, monthly. And so maybe we can have her come and present. Again, I invite you to do that uh, homeless outreach. It, it'll really make you see things differently. It did me so... It's heartbreaking, definitely. Uh, Mayor? Yes, Councilman Ricardo Pacheco. I just want to address a couple of issues. Uh, one, I did speak with an organization called uh, La Voz, and they addressed the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the housing issue. And um, they talked about a lot of housing opportunities and different ways that we can help uh, in the communities. And one of the points that they made to me that I thought was interesting is how the city or our staff, maybe our council, defines affordable housing. And, and I think that with the circumstances today with the economy, the affordable housing definition that we have is, as Councilwoman Alejandra said, it, it, it sort of serves those that are at the $60,000 range or sort of at a higher range than, than is really talked about. Uh, today, before all of you came, we had a special meeting and discussed some of the new projects that are coming on. And they are affordable housing, and, and some of them... Uh, don't, but they don't address those that are in a transitional position, those that lost their home because they were ill or sick or for whatever reasons, they need to be put back into a housing. You know, Alejandra, uh, who works for the school district, or councilwoman, uh, talked about how a number of those that are in our school district, a number of families still live in cars or vans or they're, they're not living in a house. They have a very unique position. You'll talk to teachers and they'll talk about how these families don't live in a house. They go home, you know, they, they show up to school the next day, coming from a, from a car or wherever they live in, or a one-bedroom apartment that houses, you know, two or three families. And it's very difficult for a, a, a young child to be able to grow up in that environment and to study and eat and do all the things they need to do, and yet show up to school to try to get an education. So I think we need to reevaluate affordable housing and look at that transitional housing and how to serve that population because a lot of them are here in Baldwin Park, are going to our school districts. And I think we need to look and maybe connect with the school district and start to evaluate it, our housing uh, situation uh, from that standpoint. But I, I did talk to them and uh, they wanted to uh, introduce myself and city council members to different uh, organizations that do housing 
that would be interested in coming to the city and make proposals. Uh, some of them would look at different sites, possibly in this area by City Hall, which is blighted, where we have that uh, little white house in the middle, and look from there all the way across to where the clinic is and down up to the, uh, they were looking at the, at the car wash. And, and I mentioned the car wash to them because the owners there, I believe, would like to, uh, to sell their business. So there's opportunity to look into that area and somehow fit a transitional uh, housing maybe in that area if it works. So, you know, we're, I'm, I'm uh, talking to some groups and hopefully they'll be interested and they'll make a proposal to the council so that the whole council could evaluate it and, and see what would work best uh, for the city. So there is, I know some of you asked about where, you know, some discussions are going and there's some uh, companies talking to the city, some that are talking to different council members and we'll make a proposal hopefully eventually to go that direction. Uh, but on, on the issue that many of you uh, brought up uh, you know, about Planned Parenthood, uh, I share the same sentiments. I appreciate that all of you came here and expressed your concerns. Uh, Mr. Ebner, I, I appreciate your thoughts and your analogy about the different moral compasses that that one that Planned Parenthood had, has, and yet there's kids that uh, gentlemen were doing indecent actions in front of them, and then that gets in the paper. And so there's like this contradiction of morals of, you're teaching kids one thing, and then in the public, newspapers are bringing out the opposite morality on, on those issues, and something that we just need to um, to be concerned about, and to be able to address uh, those concerns with the different um, uh, clinics. And that's one of the concerns that that I have. And I know some of you brought out that the name Planned Parenthood doesn't really define planning a family; it means ending it. And so the name should be changed. It's not really planning a family. So I just feel that I don't agree with their uh, approach to planning a family or to educating a family in the fashion that they do in the uh, books that they bring out. Most clinics just do, you know, that's the health care. They, they deal with the diseases and the issues that are out there. But I just don't agree with their approach to the community. And uh, so I kind of share the same sentiments. I encourage you to continue to go out, and hopefully somebody will... Um, come forth to make a proposal, and maybe we could get something else uh, there in that, in that uh, instead of having to plan parenthood, maybe we have something else. So I just wanted to share that all with you. And also on the minutes, I changed from a couple of meetings ago because I did talk more about my position with Planned Parenthood, and so I had staff just kind of type out everything I said so that what I thought about my position is is, is reflected in the minutes. So that's on on these minutes and it was changed from a previous one because I just thought the summary was was not expanded enough about what I had talked about. So uh, with that, uh, uh, one more thing on another topic is um, uh, on court enforcement, if we could have, uh, I know that we recently on court enforcement have staffed up um, our efforts in that department and uh, Shannon, if uh, with the agreement of the council, if we could come back and if our new court enforcement manager can come forth and uh, just talk about sort of their approach to code enforcement and, and some of the changes that they made. I, I've um, uh, noted in some of your emails you, that you sent to the council how the, the new code enforcement is going to operate and how you've uh, divided the city up into different districts so each uh, staff member is able to, to get out there a little more and hopefully we'll have stronger code enforcement in the next uh, couple of, um, of weeks. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and go into the um, consent calendar. So council members wishing to pull any items out, we have from uh, 1 to 12. I'd like to pull one, please. One, okay, item one more, please. We do five and nine. Okay, one more, please. Item one and five and nine. All right, council members wishing to pull any other items? If not at this point, I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass with the exception of uh, consent calendar with the exceptions of items one, five, and nine. That is my motion. Second. Is it second? Who seconded? Councilmember Hernandez. At this point, any objections? See none, so move. All right, the first one reads uh, City uh, requested by uh, Councilmember Alejandro Avila, the City of Balm Parks warrants and demands. Councilmember? Yes, so I just have a question on these. There's no page numbers, so on. Uh, the payments to Carlos Valle for clean 
cleaning outside the restrooms. What period does this cover? Because that's a lot of money for cleaning bathrooms. There's one, two, three, four, five in one page. For 4,800, 340, 1,000, 4,820. What page is that? Is that EBS in general? I could expand on that. Okay. That is our cleaning contractor, and he cleans all public restrooms at the parking structure, city hall, and the various parks. And what period does it cover? For one month. That's a one month? Yes. And then? And that's seven days a week. They traditionally clean AM and PM. Okay. So twice a day. All right, so then there's another one. I just wasn't clear. What are we paying for here? That's a lot. So they're covering the whole city? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then, hold on a second. I folded the other page. Then there's another one, uh, also Carlos Valle. One, two, three, four, five payments. Another one for 4,700, 340, 1,400, 900. They did, one stated 8 1, the other one's 8 15. So it it, uh, it should be cleaning. I do not see it on the. Uh, there is no pages on here. No. But he not. does. Ha he has a contract with the city council. I don't re recall specifically the amount. I believe it's approximately one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year to clean city hall which is all three floors, including the basement and the jail, cleaning the community center and all public facilities, including the restrooms and, uh, and cleaning the carpet, as well as the council chambers and polishing the floors citywide. It was a competitive bid and he did receive the contract. Okay, because this just says specifically restrooms. So when I see cleaning restrooms for this much money, I'm thinking, wow, I'm going to go into that business. <laughs> because it's this one specifically, Hilda Solis Park, and then this one just says outside restrooms at, and it doesn't say where. So, and I think that's billed on the 1st and the 15th. And I yes, think that's it is, why every we're two weeks. It in two separate dates. Okay. Um, but we can get you a breakdown and a copy Absolutely. of the contract and the bids, yes, and you please. can see um, the I'm pricing. I'm sure that happened a long time ago, but I don't know what we're paying for. Also, Gentry Brothers, one, two, three, four, five payments. I know they're doing a lot of work, so if you can show me what all these payments are paying for, what parts of the projects we paid for. Please. Um, I think that was it. That was it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So at this point, go ahead, I will make a motion to, uh, to approve item number one. By <clears throat> At this point, is there a second? Second. Second by Council Member Hernandez. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right. So at this point, we'll go over to item number uh, five, which is requested by Council Member Hernandez, the Code Enforcement Division update. Thank you, Council Member. Thank you. I just wanted to bring this up, um, and more importantly, I want to give uh, Ben an opportunity to just kind of highlight the name change and the direction um, that uh, the new staff that you have uh, will be conducting. Yes, thank you, Mayor and City Council. Um, the Community Development Department was very pleased to hire a code enforcement, um, or now as we would like that you would approve the name Community Enhancement Supervisor to oversee all community enhancement, formerly code enforcement activities in the city. Um, his name is Jose Martinez, of no relation to myself, uh, and we would be happy to bring him forward to uh, talk about what we're doing in the what we're currently doing and plan to do in the future. But I will mention a few of the items tonight. Uh, first and foremost, we do uh, would like to change the name of the division from Code Enforcement uh, Division to Community Enhancement Division to reflect um, a new attitude and how we conduct. Uh, co code enforcement types of activities. Um, we're, we already consider ourselves a business friendly city. We also want to be a resident friendly city. Uh, we want to be educational in our approach and we want to seek compliance, not necessarily the issuance of citations and admonishments, but compliance. We want compliance in keeping our city clean and beautiful. Um, and so we would request that the City Council approve the new name of Community Enhancement. We're also, um, in the next coming month or so, you will note that our, com our Community Enhancement um, 
officers will be wearing new uniforms to reflect that, that they are now uh, working under the direction of the community development department, not the police department. Um, and they will be working in assigned areas um, of the city. We'll be using other things such as daily logs and having additional collaboration with the Public Works Department and Bulky Item and other programs. Uh, we basically uh, want to use our community enhancement officers in many different ways that they haven't been used before. And the, the, the sort of the ideas and the possibilities are endless. Uh, we don't want to work them to death, <laughs> but we do want to be creative in our approach. And so this is just the beginning and we'd be happy to report back in the future and on the progress. But there's just a little uh, little taste of, of what we're thinking about right now. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, just given the, you know, the conversations and the pictures and the things that we've received today, um, and is, again, not only a business friendly, but as you mentioned, resident, residential uh, friendliness, um, not to necessarily uh, seek out individuals um, for ticketing or for violations, I should say, but more for compliance and to continue to beautificate, uh, beautify, excuse me, uh, our great city. Thank you, Ben. Thank you very much. So I'll you. move to approve. And you want to second? Is there a that? second? Second. <laughs> Thank you. Move on. to approve. Uh, do you want to move to I'll approve? go ahead and second. second. Any move to approve. There we go. Okay, he's moving to approve, and I'm second. I'll second. Okay. All right. All right, thank you very much. All right, so at this point, we're going to go over to item number nine, which is the authorized uh, purchase of uh, police uh, motorcycles. At this point, uh, Council Member Hernandez, sir. Thank you. Just wanted to bring this up uh, just to show the thriftiness, but also the, uh, you know, the uh, making sure that we're spending, you know, each of our dollars uh, well spent. Um, Chief, you could, you could just highlight, uh, you know, some of the efforts that uh, your staff went on here uh, to find these resources for yourself. Oh, it's on. <laughs> I can see. There it is. All right, let's try this one more time. Thank you, Council Member Hernandez, okay. Mayor Lozano, Thank Council you. Members. Just want to add that uh, in collaboration with uh, the El Monte Police Department, we we're able to locate four used BMW motorcycles 2016 at an excellent price $13,300 each, opposed to a $30,000 brand new motorcycle um, with four. Motorcycles and a cost saving of close to $65,000. So with that great uh, collaboration that we have, we're able to uh, to locate and uh, and purchase these. Perfect. Thank you very much. Motion to approve. Second. Any objections? I look forward to seeing them out on the streets. Right, thank you. What, what 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 kind are they? What brand? They are a BMW. Ooh, I drove one about three weeks ago, by the way. Oh. Yeah, sure did. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a cop one though, <laughs> but, but yeah, it was. Not, I, I did drive a cop one one time where we thought we were going to get Harley Davidson's here. The owner from uh, Brent, Brent Laylaw's drove it out, and that was a nice bike, by the way. All right, so at this point, uh, um, we're going to go ahead and go over to uh, the successor agency. So at this point, um, I'll go ahead and the um, successor agency uh, to dissolve Community Development Commission of the City of Ballon Parks warrants and demands. And also SA2, which accessory agency the same one. So I'll move for, for both. Uh, that's my motion. I'll second. Second. Any objection? See none, so move. All right. So at this point, we'll go down to the reports of officers so at 13, which is a review of commissions, applicants. Can we want to move this over and yes. finalize the next, the next one? All right. Okay. We'll definitely do it, and it will be done. <laughs> Where's Chris at? Oh, he's back. Oh, no. He got a point already. All right. So at this point, just a joke back there, Chris, seeing you're awake. Um, all right. So at this point, I'll go ahead and move for adjournment of the city council. Second. Second. Any objections? See not so move. All right. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and go into opening up the uh, finance uh, committee. So at, at the, uh, go ahead and uh, we have the consent calendar. So the treasurer's report. I'll go ahead and move uh, uh, for approval. That is my motion. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. At this point, any any objections? Seeing none, at this point, I'd like to move for adjournment. That is my motion. Second. Second by Vice Mayor Monica Garcia. Uh, any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right, so then, can someone hand me the, uh, where's the, uh, the, housing the housing, I just had it. Here, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Avila. All right, at this point, I'd like to open up the uh, Baldwin Park Housing Authority. Um, 
And at this point, we have consent calendars items one and two. I'll go ahead and move. That's my motion. Second. Second by who? Pacheco. By oh, council member, my colleague, uh, Ricardo Pacheco. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I'd like to move for adjournment. But before we do uh, uh, adjourn, I just want to mention, um, uh, uh, Mr. Guterres, and I know it was mentioned about, about some of the streets. Uh, we need to look at the, the, the figure out a plan uh, to address the uh, sidewalks, there's a weeds and some of the areas that are part of the city, but I'm seeing it. Someone has to be seeing it. So we're going to have to be more aggressive in that. Mr. Martinez, that's in the back back there. Uh, so make sure that we address those areas. Uh, and if it's public works, then let's do that. And we definitely have to pick up uh, pick up the uh, uh, the pace in, in making certain that we're addressing all those all those particular And especially, I was mentioned by the two gentlemen uh, uh, earlier, um, the, the couches and all kinds of things that are dropped off uh, uh, out in the street. I mean, if I'm seeing them, I, I, I don't know why. We're not seeing them. So we could send that across as well, Mr. CEO. Actually, my campaign last year, I sat in one that was pretty comfortable, by the way. And, and, and well, I shouldn't, well, whatever, but nevertheless, that, no, it got picked up after I, I did, but I, I was like, I need to sit somewhere. So, so it's very important for us to make sure we address it. Because in some areas, you see that weeds, it's dead grass, and it's just like, come on, you guys, we're seeing that, especially on the boulevard right here. So let's make a plan to get out there. So, Ms. Martinez, so you're going to have a tough job up there, so we've got to make sure we're following up and, and then also bring some type of progress report to the council members at least uh, at the end of September to see what we're looking at. And, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, why don't we set up a, a study session with Mr. Martinez so you could give us a, a cover at, is, at the end of September, okay with you? Not that you have to have everything, but just give us a report and let's follow up. And then Public Works, the same thing. Let's look at these areas. And the because I know they're picking up some of the stuff, but just some that are just visible, and I, I don't know what's happening there. So we could address that. I, I would appreciate that. Um, oh, okay, yes, and before I forget, and, and I want to thank you, City Legal Counsel, uh, the announcement this is announced uh, as required by the Government Code Section 54952.3. Members of the, of the City Council are also members of the Board of Directors of the Housing Authority and Finance Authority, which are concurrently uh, convening with the City Council this evening, and, and each Council member is paid an additional stipend of $30 for attending the Housing Authority meeting and $50 for attending the Finance Authority meeting. So I just wanted to note that for that. All right. So Mayor, I think that, really quick, yes. I just want to add sure. that when I did that, that homeless uh, walk, we we walked into that wash behind Walmart right off of Puente Avenue. It was a disaster. There was a lot of trash mm. in, inside the wash and all of, along the fence. Um, I immediately contacted Sam, and he was out there that same day. Everything was cleaned up. He sent me pictures back. So I think as long as we're notifying them, um, they do come out there quickly because it was – I still have the pictures. I'll show you the pictures. And he cleaned sure. that afternoon. It was gone. Thank that, you, Sam. That would be nice. Thank you. And also, I uh, want to uh, kudos, uh, Mr. Benjamin Martinez. I like your presentation yesterday. I mean, this afternoon. Okay. So I want to thank you. Keep up the good work. Looking forward to a lot of those uh, uh, potential um, um, businesses coming to town. All right. So at this point, I will now move to adjournment. That is my motion. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Now we're going to close the city. This, uh, this one. So at this point, is there a second? Okay. Any objections? See none. So move. Viva Baldwin Park. So we're going to go into we're going to go into a, a closed session for no more than hopefully uh, two and a half seconds, two and a half minutes, and we'll, and we'll be reporting now. So city clerk, don't leave. Thank you very much, Lulu. Thank you very much, city treasurer. Thank you. We don't have nothing to report out, so at this point, I will go ahead and make a motion uh, to close the, uh, the study the study session. Thank you. Any objections? See, not so moved. All right, thank you. I got to go. Okay, so now hey, I'll get to go. I'm going to go. All right, I'm stopping. Oh.